so psyched. Just imagine this gig, fucking High Wycombe. Ow! Here we go. Uh, the crowds are going fucking nuts. I saw some tits already. It's going to be great. It's going to be fucking ace. The rock group are Nick Hill. He sings. Luke does rhythm guitar. John Would Hill. he agree with that? Huh? Would he agree that it's rhythm? Absolutely, yeah. He knows it. Please. Um, John Jackson, we drafted him to do second rhythm guitar. I thought it was three leads. I always thought it was three leads. I never thought it was three leads. The three guitarists, uh, Tom, Luke, and John, and who else? Oh, Johnny, and Johnny on bass. Nick is the singer, I'm the guitarist, lead guitarist. There's rhythm guitarists Tom and John, and Johnny Seymour, and Fred Lamb, and Ben Burrows. Well, I play drums, and so does Fred Lamb. Um, while he's around, um, and flute, and flute. <laughs> Amongst the multitude of acts that emerged in the early 21st century, there was one act who felt they stood out. One band that truly believed they could make a difference in this brave new world. One group of musicians, no, one group of friends, who some might say had neither the will nor the drive to succeed, but who would argue that they had one thing the others didn't. It was heart. These guys thought they had heart and they had it in spades. Their name? Oh, the Jumbo Boomers. Capital J, capital B. I was sort of brought up listening to 50s rockabilly. Like, my dad loves that stuff. So I've always just liked guitar, sort of chicken picking. And, um, <laughs> you know, when I, when I actually first picked up guitar, the first thing I learned to do was chicken pick. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> then I found these guys as a group of miscreants <laughs> at school and you know we formed a band. We met in Winchester, the six of us I'd say, before it was seven, i.e. me, Nick, uh, Johnny, Tom, Fred, Luke, we were just hanging out because it's a very small town, not much to do. How did you come along? Uh, out of the woods. Out of the woods, <laughs> he came out of the woods. And yeah, we chucked a, some kind of noose towards his neck. No, no, he's no, he's the seventh. So you're from Winchester. Sure. And how was that uh, for 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 the formation of music? I mean, heady obviously. days. <laughs> yeah. well, the heady times we had. It was um, it was fresh. It was new. It was different. We we had, you know, like we had all the time in the world. That pond was a bit small. Fun was a bit small. Oh my god, it was a kind of Yeah. Uh, we, yeah, oh god, the sake face was always bad. Go on in. No, no, it's not. Schools and parks and boredom and friends and, and things, yeah. Where was the oh, hub yeah. of the creation? Where did you do it all? Well, I, yeah, well, I would say Luke's studio in Park Road, one Park Road studio. Yeah, we just turn up, rock turn out. Turn on, turn up. Yeah, tune in. Plug up, turn up, and turn up, T turn up, <laughs> tune up, plug in, turn up, <laughs> rock out, hit record, hit record. You you started the album in two thousand and eight, I believe. Two thousand and eight, the tail end of two thousand and eight. Well, I remember it was the summer. Summer two thousand eight. Summer two thousand and eight. Summer yeah. Um, and obviously we we've just kind of come into the autumn of two thousand and eleven. Mm. Uh, and how far along are you with that? It's going well. well. 50 to 60 percent. Ish. It sounds, it sounds great. Yeah, it sounds well, really what good. What we've done. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's far from being finished. Mm. And is there any reason why it's taken so long? Well, yeah. We've been very through now. Big time. Um, how, long, how long have you been working on that for? Three, three or four years. These things take time. Mm. It's brewing. You, you know. It's all relative. You don't make a tea in one minute, you make it in three minutes. Three minutes. Now, if you expand that principle to an album, you don't make it in one year. If you're us, you make it in three or four. The Jumbo Boomers had decided their first album, the cleverly titled Who Spiked the Punch, would be a worldwide hit. Made up of songs only half of them recognised and none of them fully knew, little did they realise quite how much the creative process would take from each and every one of them. When did you start the album? I think 
it's one of those epics and yeah, it will well, never quite be finished. Yeah. It's just, it's our, when, when so is, 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 is it more for you guys then? Yeah. The album's just not for, not for the people, it's no, more we, for No, we you. want to make sure our baby you know, is yeah. ready for the world. And when we seven were born, I think the stars must have aligned with me. Because I mean, since birth, absolutely. I think it's how we've been in writing. I think that one. It writes itself. It writes itself a lot of it. What do you think your first hit was? Was. Uh, well, your first well, hit. Is, yeah, is, yeah. But is. what was the first hit? Molly. Yeah. Molly, big hit. Oh, that's going back a while, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. Um, I'd say that's a good thing. Uh, gone. Gone. I think we're gonna go with gone. Points. There are many, many, so many high points. You couldn't, it's hard to choose. Choose one. It's hard to choose one high point. Were you part of the? Were you in the band for the Battle of the Bands? Mm, no. Theme. I got, I well, I was there though. I am. I am. Oh, really? Yeah. I remember. How spooky. I remember it came when that gig when. Um, and I got pushed on the stage when you when you were playing. And was well, like, that was surely a message, wasn't it? it maybe yes. This guy is primed for you. That. The Battle of the Bands competition took place every year in Hampshire in Winchester's Guild Hall and was usually packed to the rafters by both the bands in the competition and the close families and friends of the bands in the competition. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Are you guys all right? Yeah, I want to hear more from you guys. I really do. Unfortunately for the Jumble Boomers, the year they entered, 2005, would turn out to be the last year of the contest. To this day, there has still been no reason given as to why it stopped. Some say council budgetary concerns, others say ghosts. You may never know. Either way, it was also the year they won, and from where they were standing, the start of something big. Can you uh, famous to be in Battle of Bands in 2004 in Winchester? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. The competition was cancelled, so we're still current champions. Yeah. Raining so that's bands. raining, so that's what? Eight, nine, uh, seven years? Yeah. Mm. And I suppose Winchester is the capital of Hampshire, I would have, I would have said. Not the time to, but So we're kind of reigning champions of Hampshire music, talent, young talent. They the entered the young Battle of the Bands competition and mm -hmm. worked their way through the heats. And uh, not unsurprisingly, they, they won, of course. <laughs> Yeah. The final at the Theatre Royal to a packed house. How would you, how would you describe their progress over the years they've been together? <laughs> uh, they've had their ups and downs. Slow. Yeah. Um, the ups were very promising, and it's sad they weren't followed through. I really had big hopes for them. We called them the Untouchables because they were when we were that age. Slash the fit. You know, well, the that's what I thought you were going to say. Oh, the fits, yeah, the fits was more important. I think they know that already though, so that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> the untouchables are probably worse. <laughs> What's it like going out with a jumbo boomer? Um, it's alright. Um, like Lovely. any other boyfriend, yeah. It's nice because they're in a really big band <laughs> that you like. It's fun really band. great musicians. So. Mm. Mm. It can be a bit annoying at times actually. They call themselves the biggest band in Winchester. Okay. Um, yeah, I agree. You, you agree? 100%, 100%. Which is good. How big are they? Huge. There's no band out there which just really has fun <coughs> and um, communicates that fun in a show like they do. Not many people <coughs> know of them, but I guess but they're huge. To us at that time, they were. <laughs> they still are. Yeah. yeah, they still are, but not, not many people. Is it? Yeah, well, yeah. But, but isn't the definition of being huge is that they're well known and they're well respected within their industry and the fact that you've just said that not no one knows who they are, is that not <clears throat> negative? I think that's bad marketing. So you're moving back to Winchester though? Absolutely. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. obviously you just said that you were seven big fish yeah, in a small yeah. pond, so you moved to London. So yeah. were, you, were, you, were, were, you, were you then were you then, were you then a small uh, fish? Uh, it's, I, I actually, my time in London has uh, made the pond bigger. Winchester's a bigger pond. I yeah. see more erosion, stuff, you know. So I'm still a big fish in a massive pond. We're, we're, yeah, there are too many other big fish. 
Yeah. London, London. London, London has, has really big fish. fish. We still big fish. Don't get me wrong. Well, no, it's, it's a visit, a quick visit. That's it. And when you say a quick visit, I mean a week? A or? week. A week. Two, two weeks. That's so, And so on. So potentially more. It could be a lot. I just need to get back into that zone where I was when we when we first crafted John, we crafted Molly, we crafted <laughs> Come on, motherfucker. You know what I mean? Yeah. Seasonal singles. A Halloween spooky <laughs> kind of you know, there's no spooky rock songs. You know, rock songs are either too spooky to the point where they're not fitting for Halloween. They're not you know, they're not themed, they're just a bit spooky. Whereas what we're talking about is we could get you get getting really spooky, but in the same kind of vein that you're used to with the Jumbo Boomers. And at some point, so we'll do that kind of stuff: seasonal singles, seasonal, singles. you know, paramount songs that you have to listen to at that time of year. Um, but the album, yeah, is the body of work, and we will finish it. But we're in no rush, or under no pressures. Yeah. You gotta take your time in the body. Make hay when you want. If you want. <laughs> Should we turn? Atlantic yeah, have been sniffing around, but oh, that's embarrassing. Have they? They've shown yeah. interest. They showed yeah. a big, they showed load of interest. We want to come down to it. We don't have anything booked. So we um we thought do we so wouldn't it, wouldn't do it, we it? need those guys do we and we thought no we don't it need them sold it for us we yeah. decided then and there we heard Atlantic was simply about we thought fuck them fuck them they were showing the money yeah sure. we saw the cash did we want it sure a little bit of sure wanted it. sure yeah we wanted it <laughs> but <laughs> but you couldn't organise a gig in time for them to come down and no we didn't we were we were busy perfecting yeah yeah we music comes first that's perfection. Our, our sort of motto. Music comes first. Do it. It's a joke there somewhere. Yeah, sometimes I do. <laughs> <laughs> Not often. It'd be nice to have gigs you want to go to. Yeah. Improve mm. our lives. Mm. Massively. <laughs> so what does the future hold now for the Jumble Boomers? As veteran musicians of all the four gigs, they know better than most that the road to success is paved with job-shaped obstacles and built on the cobbles of realistic expectations. Yet, they still seem to firmly believe that it's just a matter of time before their friends start coming to them and asking for the money for a pint. With the album out sometime between now and 2018, it's a goal that's within their reach. But with secondary drummer Fred Lamb refusing to take part in this documentary, and half the other remaining members currently living on the road, is it just a matter of time before the Jumble Boomers become another fond memory? Anyone who knows them would certainly hope not. In fact, strangely, it was another seven piece who said it best in their song, Don't Stop Moving. I can feel the music moving through me everywhere. Ain't no destination, baby. We don't even care. I'm a high, 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 high,